invasive species are a leading driver of biodiversity loss in the Pacific. And there is significant impact on ecosystem resilience, leading to a loss in ecosystem services and the ability to adapt to environmental stresses such as climate change. On the ground practical management action of invasive species is a major gap in the Pacific. Without addressing this, species will continue to become extinct, ecosystems will continue to degrade and we will be left with poor natural infrastructure to provide for our daily needs and protection from environmental change. The Pacific Regional Invasive Species Management Support Service, or PRISMS, is a regional mechanism to facilitate scaling up invasive species management across the Pacific to address this gap. PRISMS partners collaborate together, bringing their specialist knowledge and skills to provide a comprehensive suite of management options. Invasive species management often requires both a broad set of specialist skills and resources to be successful. The PRISMS partners are committed to supporting and building capacity of Pacific Islanders to achieve successful outcomes based on best practice. They are also committed to assist Pacific battlers to secure funding for invasive species management and to provide donors with opportunities that meet their objectives. I invite you to get to know our PRISMS partners the programs and our associates and encourage you to seek their support. Welcome to the Battling Invasive Species Session of the 10th Pacific Island Nature Conference on Nature Conservation and Protected Areas. In 2013 in Fiji, at the 19th conference, invasive species indicators were not looking promising. Invasive species were clearly as identified as one of the leading drivers of single country endemic species and with a dubious current indicator status of poor and with a deteriorating trend. Today, Pacific Island Invasive Species Battlers, experts, current donors and I will take you on a journey through the Pacific to once again look at the current state of invasive species, some of the impacts they are having, some solutions and some challenges. We hope you enjoy this virtual ride with us through the Pacific in these challenging times. The Global Biodiversity Outlook 5 informed us that Aichi Target 9 was one of only six targets were, that were, were partially achieved. The Pacific region was noted for its contribution. The trend of increasing numbers of invasive species worldwide, worldwide highlights the issue we are facing. On the positive side, the number of successful mammal eradications is increasing. Islands are extinction epicenters. Pacific ecosystems are one of the world's biodiversity hotspots with a large number of species found only in the Pacific and nowhere else. The Pacific faces some of the highest extinction rates in the world. Just under half of the IUC and red listed threatened species are found wholly on islands. Invasion and disease is the only threat more likely than any other to be impacting these species on an island. The Pacific is well endowed with opportunities where it is feasible to eradicate invasive mammals to benefit highly threatened species. There are over 12,000 species of ants. Many species have been introduced to the Pacific. Of the 18 species which, cause, which may cause problems, Five species cause serious problems, and three of these are life-changing. There have been 725 IUCN red list species identified across the Pacific, which are susceptible to impacts from invasive ants. In addition to biodiversity impacts, there are considerable economic costs. Worldwide, it has been estimated that the costs of damage from IRA invasive alien species are over 1.4 trillion per year, amounting to 5% of the global economy. If the red imported fire ant invades the Pacific, it has been estimated that regionally it could cost over 300 million US dollars. Effective fire security can keep invasive species out of your country. The Pacific Invasive Ant Toolkit provides a wealth of resources and information pertaining to invasive ants in the Pacific. As noted earlier, island species are particularly vulnerable to extinction. 
The Pacific is no different, with the majority of our identified unique species already lost or disappearing. This is not only highly disturbing from a biodiversity point of view, but also the loss of ecosystem function, which these species support, and in turn, the ecosystem services provided to communities. Pacific Island communities are heavily reliant on resilient ecosystems. Ecosystems that are sustainable and adaptable to changing environmental conditions. Climate change threatens to compound these impacts, exacerbating the spread and establishment of alien species, intensifying their impacts and creating new opportunities for them to become invasive. Invasive species reduce the resilience of natural habitats, agricultural systems and urban areas to climate change, while at the same time, climate change reduces the resilience of habitats to biological invasions. The use of natural enemies of invasive plants is often the only solution to weed invasions at the landscape level. I'm Lindley Hayes. I'm a team leader at Manaki Whenawilang Care Research and I'm based in the South Island of New Zealand. Manaki Whenua is the lead for the PRISM's Natural Enemies Natural Solutions Programme. This programme is critical for tackling widespread invasive weeds in the Pacific, and it's often the only option when other control methods are no longer feasible because the weeds are just too abundant or difficult to control. There are already hundreds of invasive species having negative impacts in the Pacific, and all terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems are threatened by them. Unfortunately, this situation is expected to worsen with time, as more introduced plant species will eventually naturalise, and also because of the exacerbating effects of climate change. Weeds really thrive on disturbance. You may be surprised to know that the use of natural enemies is not a new thing for the Pacific. Natural enemies such as beetles and rust fungi have been safe, safely and successfully deployed against weeds in the Pacific for more than 100 years. 17 Pacific Island countries and territories, or PICTS for short, and that's not including New Zealand, Australia or Hawaii, have deliberately released at least one natural enemy to control a weed. There are many examples of weeds in the Pacific that have been successfully and safely controlled in this manner. Examples include broomweed, grand balloon vine, Mile a minute, lantana, nailgrass and red passion fruit, water hyacinth and water lettuce. However, the use of natural enemies in recent decades has become a forgotten or underutilised tool in most pits. If we're to have any chance of reducing the harmful impacts of weeds in coming decades, this approach will need to be more widely utilised. We can help you do that safely and successfully in accordance with international best practice. There are numerous natural enemies available in the Pacific which could be shared more widely right now and others under development. Our goal is to build a Pacific-wide network where PICTS can work together and support each other to harness the power of natural enemies to control weeds. Please contact me if you're interested in exploring this opportunity further. Eradicating rats is a proven and effective way to support ecosystems and enable them and Pacific communities to adapt to the impacts of climate change. Rodents have been successfully eradicated from 85 islands in the Pacific. Pacific islands intimately connect land and sea. Rats, cats and other invasive predators quickly destroy these links, particularly by predating on native forest seeds, forest birds, seabirds and other vital ecosystem components. Effective management of predators is key to protect terrestrial and marine systems, supporting their function and increasing their and their community's resilience. Eradicating rats is a proven and effective way to support forests and enable them and Pacific communities to adapt to the impacts of climate change. Mammalian predators severely impact the ecosystem services of wild food provision, flood protection and freshwater regulation. Removing this stressor allows species and ecosystems to recover and provide these services. Removing inverse invasive vertebrae from islands is a tool for addressing challenges to society and the planet in relation to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, not just to biodiversity. 
Are you tired of rats and other pests destroying your crops? Do you want to improve the productivity of your reef and your coastal fisheries? Perhaps you aspire to bring back the birds or regenerate your forests. Talk to us at Island Conservation. We are the PRISMS partner that specialises in the removal of invasive species from islands. That's what we do. You may not be aware, but rats and other invasives can be completely removed from some islands and with basic precautions prevented from returning. I know how productive a garden can be when there are no invasive species to worry about. I have seen seabird populations rebound, bringing with them that nutrient-rich guano that's so critical for the health of our reefs and coastal fisheries. Coconut crabs and land crabs flourish in the absence of rats, and I have seen seedlings of native trees growing where they did not grow before. I have witnessed mosquito populations vanish after the removal of rats, and I can only imagine how this could improve the management of certain diseases. Want a better life for you and your community? Think about the impact invasive species are having in your environment and contact us, we may be able to help. Food security, tourism and health are currently also threatened by rats. Rats spoil a significant proportion of many significant food crops. They severely damage native flora and fauna upon which ecotourism depends, and they are carriers of waterborne diseases particularly leptospirosis, a deadly disease on the rise in the Pacific. Ecotourism and agriculture will be boosted by healthy island ecosystems. Small communities who depend on traditional and modern fishing, hunting and agriculture rely on healthy ecosystems for sustainable livelihoods. People compete directly with rodents for some food sources Invasive species management helps specific people engage with their ecosystems on their own terms. The 2020 State of Environment and Conservation in the Pacific Islands Regional Report indicates that invasive species are under management or eradicated has a poor to fair status and the trend is mixed. Pacific Island countries and territories are at different stages of readiness and capability to address these two indicators. Those that have institutionalised invasive species management within government, committed to addressing invasive species by committing funds, and have collaborated and utilised regional mechanisms and support are progressing well. The SPREP Invasives team surveys key indicators to measure whether the, the thematic objectives of the guidelines are being successfully implemented both nationally and as a region. The indicators are completed by National Invasive Species Coordinators in conjunction with their national counterparts. Where possible, the indicators are supported by existing global databases. The indicators were piloted in 2015. The results are also used to help guide project formation. The regional, general regional trend across all foundations themed indicators is improving, with over half of all countries and territories having some success in most indicators. The general regional trend across all problem definition, prioritisation and decision making themed indicators is also improving. The marine monitoring related indicators are the poorest, with prioritisation indicators the best. This has been aided by the creation of national invasive species strategies and action plans. Whilst there has been an increasing trend in management action, it is still the largest gap in national invasive species management programs. Until invasive species are actually physically managed, the impacts of invasive species will continue to grow. Regional or multi-country territory projects provide opportunities for collaboration and at least in monetary value, indicate potential increases in the regional indicators. In 2013, the region was not long into the Jeff Pass Regional Project. Since then, the project has been completed, lessons were learned, and a larger profile of regional opportunities has been secured. Tēnā katoa katoa. 
I'm Monica Gruber from Pacific Biosecurity at Wellington Uni Ventures in New Zealand. We are one of the PRISM's partners and we lead the Protect Our Islands theme. We work together with our colleagues from SPREP, the Pacific Community and other PRISM's partners to support biosecurity in the region. So what is biosecurity? Well, this is one of the SPREP Battler guides and it tells you all about protecting our islands with biosecurity. Biosecurity is important because it focuses on prevention of invasive species. Prevention is more cost effective than having to manage or eradicate invasive species after they arrive. Every country in the Pacific uses biosecurity either to prevent invasives arriving or to stop them spreading once they have arrived. But there are always new species to look out for and better ways to detect and manage invasive species. One challenge is domestic inter-island biosecurity. International biosecurity is well regulated, but within country biosecurity is less well developed, so we're working on that. A key focus is on early detection and rapid response, or EDRR, and this SPREP Battler Guide talks about what is needed for EDRR. Let's all work together to protect our beautiful islands from invasive species. I'm Sam Barnabas, the country coordinator for the Invasive Red and Species Project in Tuvalu. The challenge here in Tuvalu was the smuggling of agricultural products, an issue that is worsened by the lack of facilities, equipment and human resource. Surprisingly, many earthquakes occurred on the Out Islands. One good example was the outbreak of the coal leaf worm on Nanome Island and was spreading to other islands. The coal leaf worm had destroyed most of the carnival trees in Tuvalu. Locally, the carnival tree is an important tree for canoe building, handicrafts and medicines as well. The carnival tree is a coastal growing tree, a reliable protector of the coast from coastal erosion. Since its outbreak in mid 2010, on Nanome Island, the coal leaf worm quickly prevailed on two other islands, including the capital, Tunapote. In response to this threatening situation, the Tuvalu Invasive Species Project team executed the following tasks. Strengthening partnership with the Agricultural Department, provide technical advice and support to our security officers. Local communities were advised to groom their carnival trees since they are the only host for the coal leaf worm. To replant carnival trees to prevent carnival species from total extirpation. In the future, we want to scale up our educational programs in schools and communities as well. To raise more awareness, provide more trainings for biosecurity officers, create and provide an early detection and rapid response plan to Wallace biosecurity system is still developing. I firmly believe the most important goal for Tuvalu is to ensure that Tuvalu strictly complies with biosecurity border protocols, an early detection and rapid response plan. Donc sur Futuna, depuis l'arrivée du rat noir, il y a eu la mise en place d'un protocole de biosécurité surtout pour euh, empêcher l'introduction du rat noir sur Alofi, qui est, qui est préservé de, de ce rat et qui euh, abrite énormément d'espèces indigènes et endémiques. Donc des stations d'appât ont été mises en place par le service de l'environnement depuis plusieurs années sur Alofi, et avec succès puisque jusqu'à présent, euh, aucun rat noir n'a été détecté sur l'île. Je suis Steve Cranwell, the Invasive Species Program Manager for BirdLife International and the Pacific. We support PRISMs through the Predator-Free Pacific Program, assisting with the identification of priorities, funding and provision of technical assistance for the eradication of invasive species. Invasive alien species are a key driver of Pacific Island biodiversity loss. For birds alone, this means three quarters of the more than 300 threatened species in the region face extinction because of introduced predators and competitors. Invasive species also affect livelihoods, food security, human health, trade, and ultimately threaten the Pacific way of life. Fortunately, there are effective solutions for combating these problems. First and foremost is the prevention of new introductions through biosecurity. And where rats, feral cats, and other invasive species have established, eliminating them where it's possible to do so. The Pacific has numerous islands where eradications are achievable. But this needs to happen at scale and with urgency if extinctions are to be averted. 
PRISMS provides an opportunity to do this by bringing together local and specialist knowledge, increasing the likelihood that eradications are successful, also building capacity nationally, representation across governments, technical institutions. It is this that will enable us to sustain a rich and resilient Pacific. Anaka. Hi, my name is Mele and I'm the project officer for Jeff Six uh, program. From the past few days, we were carried out uh, scoping activities to on the island of uh, Tau, Tonumea, Nuku and Kelefesia uh, to ensure that these isolated islands are fishable for red eradication to make sure that there is no other way for reds to spread across the islands of um, Hapai. We also do some few survey on the abundance of uh, biodiversity in this island, like crabs, reptiles, and ants. We also have um, a consultation at the community for their feedbacks and their comments on what we have do as a proposing activities on red eradication. My name is William Hakamoto and. I'm the coordinator for Chef 6 Project. Chef 6 Project is the main program in Tonga. This program helps to reduce the implication of invasive species on biodiversity as a whole in Tonga and the Pacific. I am focusing on predator-free program. Reds is one of the main issues that causes a reduction in birds and plant species on any island. And we found out that these four islands is a hotspot for fishing. The objective of this trip is to confirm and check whether the invasive species is present on these islands. We found out that the results and it shows two islands has red and two islands is red free. Uh, the action is needed in these two islands has red is to eradicate red and this could be the next step forward uh, project in the near future. Before finishing this short capture from Pai Islands, I would like to acknowledge a support from SPREP, the project, the island conservation for their technical support, and made a Tonga team in contacting the site saving visiting to these four islands. I thank you once again, Maro Abito. Here in Aramai, we're facing the problem from Chayana Snell. Chayana Snell is also known as the destructive pest being introduced in the 2014. The cyan African snail was found in Kwetland and Metro, and it's, it's affecting our subtropical and tropical areas, causing a lot of damage to our commercial plantation, domestic gardens, and can cause disease to our people. That's some extra challenges. This country is a developing country and not fully equipped. We need equipment, tools, and we need knowledge and carrying out daily and night records. My team the care of the giant African snail was trying to collect him and completely get rid of them. It's become everyone responsible. Uh, in the radio programs of the uh, Environmental Protection Authority office, uh, introducing that the giant African snail is, is an invasive. So when people so this day, call the office immediately. We are lucky we got support from SPRIP. One area they, they help us with is the, the eradication part and uh, building our capacity in uh, biosecurity works. Fully equipped with the uh, knowledge and trying to train them, they will be ready to do the Thank you so much. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Bradley Meyer. I'm the project manager for the Jeff 6 Regional Invasives Project uh, based in Samoa here at SPREP. SPREP's the lead technical agency for War on Weeds programs for the PRISMS. War on Weeds is all about the management of low incidence, high priority species. The purpose of the program is the protection of biodiversity. The focus is on species rather than sites, which separates this from other programs. So war on weeds typically involves the use of herbicides for invasive species management and this is one of our key areas of expertise. We use herbicides in the short term to uh, negate the need for ongoing management. So successful war on weeds programs have three aspects, accuracy, persistence and timeliness. 
And we're talking about accuracy, we're talking about minimizing non-target damage, we're talking about safety for people and the environment. Some plants produce seeds which can remain uh, dormant in the soil for decades. Regular visits are needed to ensure that those plants don't germinate and then go on to reach maturity. And because of that, uh, timing is critical. So success in all three aspects is needed for success with War on Weeds overall. We can deliver training and support for War on Weeds programs across the Pacific. Please contact the PRISMS to discuss your needs. The first thing anyone should know about Tokelau is that it is made up of three atolls, Atafu, the northernmost atoll, then the beautiful Nukunonu, and the historical home of Tuitokalau on Fakaofo. It has a total land area of 12 square kilometers. Here in Tokelau, one of the main problems we are facing is the Singapore Daisy or Wedelia. Wedelia was introduced to our shores in the year 1983. For some reason, the people who brought it here saw the beautiful flower and wanted to use its flower for decorations. It has been more than one decade Singapore daisy became a problem to our island. It became an issue due to the quick spreading through vegetative propagation, which covered a lot of land mass and also affected the growth and germination of our own native plants. Well, at first we control this invasive species traditionally by pulling the whole plant out and throwing it into the rubbish dump at the cemetery and at the back of the island. We knew we made progress, but because of lack of knowledge about this plant, we did not know it raised new plants from its node because we did not burn it, so eventually it did grow and multiplied in numbers again. Full of gratitude spread for all this work that was needed to execute this project. From the 2017 training that was done in Nukunonu on how to mix the right chemicals, how to spray, and all the paperwork to further clarify things on how we should go about in destroying this weed. As of now, we are undertaking all actions and things are looking brighter on this side as this invasive species is slowly dying away. The only things we lack here is not enough skills labor for the spraying. Here on the island, we are trying our very best in eradicating this Wadilia by sharing knowledge to all other people, springs, well, depending on the weather, teach families on how to minimize the spreading, and also teach them the importance of knowing the plant itself and its effect on us people. If we had funding, we could maximize our ability to retrieve all that we need for this project to take place and also we do the same thing with controlling of the millibug which is another huge challenge for us here on the islands that are destroying nearly half of our food crops such as breadfruit i want to tell you about a country federal states of micronesia in one of these states called yam island where it slowly invaded with invasive species. One of the terrestrial invasive problems we faced was with Empreta Serenica, threatening our environment, economic, and way of life. It was established back in the 70s, work started in the late 90s, and was eradicated in the year 2020. Life before this invasive was much simpler and required less effort due to agricultural work. If we have not gotten this species under control, agricultural production will reduce and wildfire will be much worse. At first, we tried to weed it, but it was not successful because of the underground rhizome and seed. One of the problems we had was traditionally we would have just burned it and wildfire also helped spread it. The hardest part of this work was getting the public to comply and eliminating the seed and the underground rhizome bank. Because of where we are, we must import most of the resources to control invasive. Some of the problem was technical skill, including surveying, mapping, and record keeping. Now we are training our people in these skills, and we are using these methods in our invasive project. If we have funding, we could resurvey the outer island for invasive and start working 
on other invasive plants. Next, we want to do the same thing with other invasive species, which is an issue in the act. Thank you. Hello, Iketa. My name is Mimo Sabatel, and I'm the Biosafety and Invasive Species Officer for the Department of Environment here in Vanuatu. Biological control on natural enemies is not a new thing for us. Working along with Biosafety in Vanuatu is one of the many tasks that we undertake to control or manage the invasive weeds uh, that we have in the country. On our NISA, we identified more than 15 weeds that are invasive, but so far we have uh, control for about nine of them, uh, namely myelomenite, water hyacinth, water lettuce, broomweed, and many more others. We have been involved with capacity training um, last year in 2019 in Samoa. It was a very informative training, very helpful to us, especially dealing with invasive species and we are very grateful for being part of uh, We have a current project that deals with uh, biological control funded by the New Zealand government, a five-year uh, long-term project. It focuses on pasture wheat. Uh, this concern was brought up by our local farmers on the reduction of beef protection. The project was mainly to introduce control to weeds Turkey Perry, Wild Peanut, Hibiscus Burr, and many other weeds that can be found on the pastures. So the use of biological control was seen as a very effective approach. It's not that expensive. Uh, our livelihood depends entirely on our, on our environment and we don't want to keep on using hazardous chemicals to control the weeds, to reduce the productivity of our of our environment. This project comes along to reintroduce some of the biological control that we have in the past that were not successful. Uh, a classic example would be Mimosa tipo chica. Um, another good example uh, for biological control that was funded by this project is a, a thin sheet that was introduced to control cat's claw creeper. So it was, so it was introduced last year and it was tried here in Evate uh, and the results were, were very good it was, it, was, it was a successful establishment of the team sheet this team sheet are collected by biosecurity team and transported to a different location not on the same island but to different islands on, uh, on the south to release them to control the cat's claw creeper idea. As, as a country we've seen the effective side of using biocontrol and it is beneficial as well to our country. Uh, we encourage our country to follow the same route. Tolo Falava. I'm David Moverley, the Invasive Species Advisor for the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme. SPREP is the primary technical partner for the Resilient Ecosystems Resilient Communities Regional Programme within the prisons. The programme focuses on managing different types of invasive species together at the same time to protect ecological values at an important site such as a protected area. Once an invasive species arrives on an island and becomes well established, it may not be possible to eradicate or manage it successfully over the entire island. Focusing management efforts at valued sites allows us to protect species and ecosystems into the future, despite having surrounding populations of invasive species around the sites. There are several key concepts which are important for managing multiple species over sites. The site will need to be managed on an ongoing basis to keep the impacts from invasive species to a minimum. The site will require ongoing support from the local community as there is much work to be done and that will stretch on into the future. Technical aspects of managing multiple invasive species is achievable when best practice systems are used. This often includes the safe use of herbicides and other control products. Managing valued sites allows biodiversity and ecosystems to improve and maintain their integrity and increases their value to local communities and livelihoods.
think. Maloha Lele, Talofa, and hello from a small island on the north side of the Kingdom of Tonga Vavau. Here in Mountain Talau, we face the problem of red species that cause large problem to endemic, only found within the local area through damaging habitats, competing for food sources, and destroying nesting site of birds. Since the installations of red traps and monthly monitoring program in February 2015, there has been an increase in the number of Tongan whistler called Hengihenga in Tongan. And it's an endemic species of bird to Vavau. The restoration of mountain Dalau, including a fence to prevent feral pigs from destepping the leader and native seedling. The worst weeds were controlled to stop competition with native plants, and finally the protected area was ready to return native animals such as the Lao Iguana. We got support from the Department of Environment and SPREP to conduct the monthly program. Now we have trained five community members and volunteers in the monitoring program as well as conducting youth meeting to 40 attendants in the importance of managing invasive species. If we funding, we can conserve other species living in the mountain as well as plants that are growing around the mountain, also other islands in Wawa'u, and the benefit to the nature, community and tourism visitors. Malo Apito and welcome. Je suis Selma Awet, animatrice pour le thème Espèces envahissantes du projet Protège en Nouvelle-Calédonie au sein du Conservatoire d'espaces naturels. Ces espèces ont été introduites en Nouvelle-Calédonie depuis plusieurs centaines d'années et sont aujourd'hui très problématiques car leur surnombre, faute de prédateurs et de régulations assez importantes, provoque des dégâts sur les forêts naturelles et sur les espèces endémiques et constitue une véritable menace pour la ressource en eau. Bonjour, je m'appelle Kao Mema, je travaille sur le projet Protège Thème 4 euh, Espèces envahissantes. Pour mettre en place euh, les différentes actions de régulation, il faut tenir compte euh, de la structuration sociale euh, qui est spécifique à la Nouvelle-Calédonie et ne pas négliger euh, une phase de concertation euh, afin d'obtenir l'acceptation du projet. Dans cette phase de concertation, il s'agit d'informer sur le projet, de dialoguer, euh, de répondre à diverses questions et aussi prendre euh, en compte l'opinion des, des populations. Actuellement, dans le cadre du projet Protège euh, avec le Conservatoire d'espaces naturels, nous proposons aux populations des formations piégeage du cochon feral. Euh, durant ces formations, euh, deux propositions de piégeage sont mises en avant. Le piège Coléco qui est un piège d'interception et le piège euh, Cage, qui est un piège d'attraction. Euh, L'objectif de ces formations, c'est de former les populations pour qu'elles puissent être acteurs des, des actions de régulation sur le terrain. Hello, Foliot. My name is Hugo Tongotule, and I am from the beautiful island of Niue, that is found in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean. Here in Niue, we have a major problem with feral pigs. Pigs were first introduced by the early missionaries. And as far as I know, um, they have been a problem and a nuisance to the island for a very, very long time. One of the challenges that we face for, um, for this feral pig management program that we have is the rough terrain of our island here in Newark. Uh, it makes it very hard for the project team, especially the field team, working out in the field, um, to go out and look for and kill this, these pigs. A lot of the challenges that we faced before was just due to a lack of funding. Uh, with on-ground um, activities, it costs a lot of money to not only um, get people to work, work that, we, that you have in the field, but also to procure the specialized equipment, the GPS uh, tracking collars for the dogs, those are uh, not cheap. A field truck um, that's able to, especially on this island, with its um, rugged uh, landscape. I guess one of the hardest things that, that we did face before on the island was that we didn't have the technical uh, expertise needed to drive a lot of this um, program. Um, and with the help of SPREP, 
put us in contact with the right uh, organizations that were able to provide us with the um, experience and the technical expertise needed to implement some of the specialized work program we have here in um, our new way. Before our program, uh, our own people would set out um, snares you know, from nylon, nylon on string, and they, they have been able to capture some of these field pigs, but not at a level that we wanted to uh, significantly um, decrease the, their population to a level. Before this project, there were a few people on the island that were using dogs for hunting pigs. A lot of the dogs here near are um, very good at chasing after cars. But uh, we had to train them to be able to chase after pigs. We were able to um, use the funding that we received uh, to bring over some of the um, specially trained dogs from indeed uh, through a professional pig hunter. Yeah, and we could actually see that um, with specially trained dogs, they can effectively look and find pigs and then the team can go and shoot them and kill them. The one limitation that I could see um, right now is that um, with the amount of funding that we did receive, we weren't able to have enough dogs to cover the whole island. The dogs that we have, uh, we often use them around the eastern side of the island, and that's where a lot of the pigs that we catch are on the eastern side of the island. Um, after a few months and years of doing um, the field pig hunting, um, using the dogs, we were able to run a few workshops with some of the interested hunters on the island and we could actually teach them some of the new ways that we were using especially with the use of the GPS and the tracking collars for the dogs we found that by using these methods it actually increased dramatically the, the amount of pigs that we can locate and kill per day compared to when we would just hunt um, without um, the specialized equipment If we were to scale up this program with increased funding, we would like to train enough hunters so that the feral pig population will remain at a level low enough that it will have um, less impact on our environment and also on the crop plantations of our farmers. So, but we would like to have a program in place that we are able to have um, at least one hunter on the southern side, a hunter on the northern side, and a hunter on the eastern and western sides of the island so they could actually look after these sides of the island instead of just one person or two that we have right now covering um, the whole island. The SPREP Invasive Species webpage provides access to further information on regional mechanisms and networks. Regional resources including the Battler Resource Base and the Battler Series Guides along with information on current regional projects. The Pacific Regional Invasive Species Management Support Service, or PRISMS, is a regional mechanism to facilitate the scaling up of invasive species management in the Pacific. It aims to address the gaps in Pacific Invasive Species Management action. Its creation was recommended from the terminal review of the Jeff Pass Regional Invasive Species Project. The PRISMS was formed in 2019. Initial funding for the PRISMs is provided under the GEF-6 Regional Invasive Species Project with the New Zealand MFAT Project Managing Invasive Species for Climate Change Adaptation in the Pacific Project. The EU EDF-11 Proteg Project Invasive Species Component is also utilising the PRISMs to execute on the ground action. Talofa, hello. My name is Manuela Miranda. I'm a Program Manager for UNEP the United Nations Environment Programme. The GEF-6 Regional Invasives Project, funded by the Global Environment Facility, is in being implemented by UNEP and executed by SPREP. The Regional Invasives Project works with the Pacific Region Invasives Species Management Support Services, or PRISMS for short, as a new mechanism to support the operational management of invasive species and improve biosecurity in the Pacific. The PRISMS provides coordinated, collaborative and integrated support from a regional level to ensure the best practice and expertise are delivered at local and national levels. Previous projects have identified the need to continue building capacity and confidence of key personnel in the Pacific countries. These projects identify the need for regular training and mentoring, 
as invasive species personnel move through their careers. The prisms provide a coordinated response to address the needs and more. It provides donors with the ability to invest in invasive species management across the region with its vi uh, diverse needs while meeting projects and donor requirements. Through the prisms, investments are leveraged to maximize their value, contributing to tangible outcomes of landscape recovery and restoration of ecosystem services. This provides benefits to biodiversity, contributes to building resilience to climate change, and improves the livelihood of the Pacific communities. Salafalava. My name is Joseph PC and I am the Prisons Associate here at SPREP. The Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme provides secretary support, management and coordination of the five regional programmes for the prisons. PRISMS is available to all Pacific Island countries and territories. It aims to create training opportunities, offer coaching advice and provide technical support for underground project execution. Prisons assists with the development of new invasive species projects in the region. Visit our webpage to complete the PRISMS request form for any technical assistance you may need. Thank you. The value of the PRISMS current activities portfolio is approximately 12.5 million US dollars. Activities from multiple projects are grouped together within the Pro PRISMS programs to maintain technical coordination and focus. PRISM's partners also work together to develop and propose new projects to meet the needs of countries and donors. Talafalava, my name is Isabel Rash and I work at SPRIT as the Regional Invasive Species Coordinator for the GEF6 Regional Invasives Project. The GEF6 Regional Invasives Project is working to strengthen national and regional capacities to reduce the impact of invasive species on globally significant biodiversity in the Pacific. The project started in 2019 and is expected to complete in 2024. The prisons allow us to manage the GIF6 project effectively by providing opportunities to step up the management actions on the ground, such as the program management course, which was delivered in October 2019. It provides us access to the best practices and innovative invasive species management actions, as well as offer a platform to synergize with other projects which creates opportunities for creative collaboration. Hi, I'm Dominic Sadler, the Invasive Species Coordinator for the European Union funded Protege project. So the four components are agriculture and forestry, fisheries and aquaculture, water resource and invasive species. The project is being implemented jointly by SPC and SPREP. SPREP's in charge of implementing the invasive species component in French Polynesia, New Caledonia, Wallace of the Tuna and Pitcat. Working with PRISMS gives us direct access to all of their technical knowledge and expertise and provides a standard uh, approach for all of our projects across the region. One of the first initiatives of the PRISMS was the Invasive Species Program Management course held over five weeks in 2019 in Samoa. The course focused on program management skills for a national invasive species program consisting of the five PRISMS regional programs. In addition to the core invasive species focused themes, general program management, health and safety, social inclusion and communication were also included. My name is Vats Mayava and I'm the Terrestrial Conservation Officer for Samoa's Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment. My role in the ministry is to assist with implementing activities and programs towards safeguarding Samoa's biodiversity, as well as mitigating threats towards it. The PRISM's Invasive Species Management course has been very valuable to our staff in providing insight into invasive species work done in the region, as well as creating more understanding on what needs to be done in order to control and manage invasive species in our own country. PRISM's assists with the development of new projects. In fact, we have met with PRISMS twice now in order to discuss the possibility of introducing two of PRISMS regional programs in Samoa. For the Natural Enemies Natural Solutions program, we're looking at ways to safely introduce bioagents to help control our invasive weeds in Samoa, such as the African tulip. And for the Resilient Ecosystem Resilient Communities program, 
We aim to restore the native biodiversity of the Uofatu community, ensuring the revival of ecosystem services it provides. And although these activities are still in the pipeline, we hope that this is just the beginning for more opportunities for Samoa in meeting our national invasive species priorities. Appetite. As a region and with the assistance of donors, we are aiming for concrete on the ground achievements in invasive species management. Projects funded by traditional biodiversity focused donors, such as the Global Environment Facility, have been successful in institutionalizing and supporting in-country invasive species teams. One-off costs such as eradications on larger islands or securing new natural enemies for widespread weeds has been more difficult. Invasive species management as a tool to improve outcomes for climate change resilience, sustainable and economic development and health have been scientifically proven but are yet to be fully acknowledged as a priority for donor funded projects with these aims. New Zealand seeks to stand with the Pacific on climate change and is in the process of setting up a climate change program which will drive adaptation actions across the region. Invasive species are a really key driver of vulnerability, increasing disaster risk and reducing food security, and having a wide range of impacts on community resilience. Part of New Zealand's climate change program will look to improve invasive species management outcomes, both by supporting a regional mechanism, uh, the PRISMS or Pacific Regional Invasive Species Management Support Service, as well as by driving invasive management actions on the ground through our partners in New Zealand and the Department of Conservation, who will provide technical assistance and capacity development support on a range of species, and Manaki Whenua Lankia Research, who will improve biocontrol um, and weed management outcomes on a range of species. We're particularly excited to be working with the PRISMS mechanism because it's a multi-stakeholder, multi-partner initiative that is really seeking to improve management and coordination across the Pacific. We hope that by the end of this project it will provide a way for donors and uh, PRISMS partners to understand what the needs are in different Pacific Island countries, uh, where best to target actions um, and reduce issues around donor coordination and overlap. We also hope that by the end of our work there'll be improved outcomes in terms of invasive species management and that overall uh, we're, we're looking to see community resilience improved. Additional regional initiatives for the next three to four years include developing a regional invasive species mainstreaming strategy, develop guidelines for creating national invasive species sustainability plans, further improving regional monitoring and reporting, reviewing the guidelines for invasive species management in the Pacific, developing strategies for PRISMS programs, and to develop a PRISM sustainability plan. Although scientific information to exists to support the benefits of invasive species management, local contextual data is usually required for projects to be funded. With such a wide geographical, environmental and cultural scope, Pacific data is hardly readily available. In partnership with the University of Newcastle and funding by New Zealand, SPREP is supporting Pacific Island students through PhD scholarships and support to determine how some of this data may be captured locally throughout the Pacific. Hi, I'm Sasha Fuller from the University of Newcastle, Australia. I'm the university's Pacific Node Coordinator. The University of Newcastle has partnered with the PRISMS program to have Pacific students work on applied projects that will help find solutions for the challenges faced by Pacific Island communities in invasive species management. These students are all working on climate change adaptation projects that fit within the PRISMS program. We have a Tongan student working on predator-free Pacific. We have a Fijian student working on natural enemies, natural solutions. And we have a Rotoman student working on resilient ecosystems, resilient communities. Having these students work on key PRISMS program initiatives relates the local context to global scientific practice. Not only does this partnership enhance the capacity of these three Pacific students, it also enhances the ability of countries in the Pacific to design and implement their invasive species project 
and as well seek future partnerships and funding opportunities that put them in a better place in terms of climate resilience and future effective invasive species management. We're really excited to be partnering with PRISMS on these projects as it provides a fantastic opportunity to work with partners who are experts in their field. It's because of the PRISMS program that the data collected and the research outcomes will have a much wider reach. They'll be made available throughout the Pacific through the PRISMS program. In the iwi katoa na mihi e ke katoa. Uh, ko Luce Anson, uh, Tumaki o Te Papa Atawhai a hau. Nā rira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, we were a, a country that was came out of the Pacific and in the words of uh, Tatimu uh, to Huhu, we should be contributing back. He led the World Heritage Commission and one of his first meetings with me, he said, Lou, we must lean in and help the Pacific communities. And we're doing this today with a, a partnership and we have some experience in this area and we've got this vision for predator-free New Zealand, this uh, work we've been doing on predator-free islands, be in the sub-Antarctic or Raoul Island or in the Hauraki Gulf. So we're delighted to partner on this work on uh, invasive species and how we can help in the Pacific. We think this is something that we can add unique value through through scientists that uh, work on this in New Zealand and through working alongside indigenous communities in the Pacific. We see this as an area with increasing climate change that some of these uh, ecosystems are increasingly more vulnerable. We're seeing that in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and we want to lean in and help our Pacific neighbours at a time when you really need help and we can stand up. We've already been involved in, in training programs in Samoa and we intend to do a lot more and we are thinking of you at this time and I'm delighted to be working with you. Kira koutou katoa. As a region, we are making some progress against the impacts of invasive species. However, this has not been at the scale that is required. We are still losing irreplaceable, unique biodiversity. Our ecosystems are still under a massive level of pressure and our ability to rely on our natural capital for our livelihoods is diminishing by the day. We all have a responsibility to protect nature for the benefit of our families and communities. Some of us have responsibilities at the national, regional and global levels. Invasive species management is a key tool that can be effectively used today with immediate results. We need to step up and do this. Let's <laughs> go.